This video is about the humble Lou, or as it's also called, the WC. There seems to be some contention about the origin of the word Lou. Some say that the Lou is so named because the toilet was commonly located in room 100 in buildings, and Lou and 100 look very much the same. And the WC, of course, stands for water closet. There is a long history of these necessary objects. Going back, for example, to Roman times, communal toilets like these were common. And this more primitive example, which is in the Danish Rosenborg Castle, dates back to the early 17th century. Or private rooms like this medieval privy. And here is Marie Antoinette's toilet in the Palace of Versailles. As well as this rather plush seat in the Hampton Court Palace, also 17th century, and this rather impressive royal throne. Before the days of sewerage and the flushing toilet, most better homes would have had the commode chair. The commode chair had a pottery or porcelain pot with a lid, such as this one. And of course they had to be emptied and cleaned by the maid or manservant, if you had one, or the contents thrown out the window, as happened in Georgian times. This is a rather ecclesiastical shape, as is this commode chair. And here is one which was affectionately called the Thunderbox. Or maybe a chamber pot would have filled the bill there. These could be, could be made of porcelain or pottery, but cheaper versions were also made in tin and enamel. Blue and white. And lovely Royal Dalton, no less. Now this is an interesting chamber pot because it was made as a wedding present and given to the bride on her wedding night. It reads, This pot is a present scent. Some mirth to make is only meant. We hope the same you'll not refuse, but keep it safe and oft in use. When in it you want to, pss, remember them who sent you this. And this little frog adorns the interior of this pot, as does this one in this example, with the added artwork of a rather startled looking man looking upwards. Here are three other examples. This one is in pewter, 17th century. Silver with a family crest and cheapest of all, made in baked enamel. The credit for inventing the flush toilet goes to Sir John Harrington, godson of Queen Elizabeth I, who invented a water closet with a raised cistern and a small downpipe through which water ran to flush the waste, way back in 1592. This is Queen Elizabeth's first toilet which contained this flushing system. His invention was ignored for almost 200 years. It was not until 1775 that the first patent for a flushing water closet was issued to Alexander Cummings, a watchmaker and inventor. He developed the S-shaped pipe under the toilet basin to keep out the foul odours. They looked something like this. This was his original patent design, followed by the addition of the S-Bend. Just under 100 years later, 
London plumber Thomas Carrapa decided to meet the growing demand for bathrooms with flushing toilets. He opened one of the very first bathroom showrooms in London in 1870. He was awarded nine patents for plumbing innovations during his lifetime, including three improvements to the flushing toilet. In 1861, Thomas Crapper was hired by Prince Edward, later King Edward VII, to construct lavatories in several royal palaces. Here is one of his advertising brochures. In England in the later parts of the 19th century, many pottery factories made porcelain toilets. Thomas Twyford, Royal Dalton, Woodward and Rowley were some of them. Were some of them. Here are some very early porcelain loos. These loos had no seats. You had to perch on the cold porcelain. It's not clear when the first seat was placed on the toilet, but it would have been in the late 1880s or 1890s. And now we move into the modern era and take a look at the interesting variety of innovation and design of the humble loo. The ever popular blue and white, the Baroque touch, something in cast iron and bronze. Additional plush comforts. These very decorative toilets come from Mexico. Ideal for the royal flush, Egyptian inspired maybe, and seated in total comfort. Ribbit, ribbit, for someone always on the move, and for the musically minded. I'm lost for words about this one, and you'd have to face backwards to get the full benefit here and for the executive who needs to stay in touch at all times, and finally for the person who has everything solid gold. <laughs>